Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about dematerialized and the AR slash VR fashion revolution that's coming with it. Now, if you like these kinds of videos, you should watch this video to the end, follow all our other social medias. Before we begin, I just got to say, this isn't financial advice, strictly news, research and education. How are you doing? I'm just doing a little disclaimer here to tell you that this video was redone three times because I wanted to make sure that I did this properly. Not only because I have a standard that I like to adhere to, not only for my consumers, but also for myself, but I really wanted to make sure that my points and my delivery were given properly. So that way I don't disappoint anyone in the community. So guys, please leave a like and let's get on with the video. Our subject today, dematerialized. So I decided to go down the rabbit hole into dematerialized and I guess more Luxo related news as well as the Fabricant and uh, RT, uh, RT KFT Studios, which is basically another branch of the Luxo digital designers. They're all in that umbrella, so to speak. And more or less what I wanted to get in, get in I guess like informed about for this project was more along the lines of like, what are they doing? What is dematerialized? How are they linked to Luxo? What exactly is going on here? To start that, you just gotta understand what is their, their key? What is their goal? Well, their goal is to use basically blockchain technologies as well as um, NFTs and RFID chips to basically reduce fashion waste, increase transparency within the space, and end fraudulent activities on basically uh, luxury consumer goods. And that's a pretty big thing to basically be trying to stop because from there, more or less, you're going along the lines of ending a $1.2 trillion problem as estimated in 2017. And they're saying, well, it's already happened 2020, so 1.8 two trillion dollar problem in 2022 as of writing in this article so that means that already these guys are going after a huge market cap a huge market cap of problems that need to be solved but not only do they have to be solved they have to be solved and it has to be very much silent and as silent as it has to be one thing that i've come to notice through looking into this web of different partnerships and things that are building out of Luxo, I noticed that for sure everyone was signing NDAs, so non-disclosure agreements, meaning that no one is directly involved, but everyone's kind of involved. And it goes really deep, and I'm gonna break down the partnerships in detail now, and I'm gonna leave all the sources in the description of this video because there's a lot of them. and. What I've come to notice is that most of these articles lead to another article, which leads to another article, which will get the information that you want. So it's, it really is a rabbit hole for this one. So as I was saying, dematerialized reduction of fashion waste, transparency through the use of blockchain and NFTs, and then the creation of the Luxo RFID chip, which is gonna be used to verify and basically link your luxury goods to a blockchain as well as these kinds of platforms. Now, so far as it stands, some of the, some of the luxury fra uh, fashion brands that are partnered with it that I could see almost pretty much quickly would be Chanel, Vogue Talents, and with Chanel comes Karl Lagerfeld, but he passed away. He was just more of a tribute to the Chanel brand. Uh, we got Nike, Puma, Adidas, these are all other brands that I've pretty much seen through this web associated either directly or th through the grapevine, which is very, very much close enough when it comes to something like this. I've seen Richmond, High Snobbiety, and as well as Burberry. So those are some of the luxury brands that I've seen as being directly linked, and I'll, and I'll walk you through it as well. And, and I'll show you right here, hold on, on the Luxo About page, as you can see, Nike right here. So Daniel Heath, he was, in, he, was, he, was, he was working at Nike. You have uh, Eric Funder as well as Dr. Bernd 
Hopcorn, Chanel, Chanel. You go further down, David Fisher, high snobbyity. Right, right here, this is actually another one I was going to mention a little bit later into the video, but I'll say it right now. And that's uh, Dr. Mervyn G. Maestri. As you can see here, Confid.io, founder and CEO, Deutsche Bank, former group coup, meaning that Luxo stretches as far as Deutsche Bank. And that's already huge because Deutsche Bank is one of the, I think it's one of the, the only six marginally successful banks in Europe right now. And I think they're more or less uh, an institution, like they're not really going anywhere. Along those lines of the RFID chips that I mentioned as well, that brings Ariane on board, right? So Ariane is basically the digital identity consortium and Luxor already partnered with them, which would bring basically, it would make sense why they're doing the digital identity, you know what I mean? Or a universal profile. They've already have the connection. The idea is to connect these um, connect these identities to chips, from my understanding, which is going to allow for the reduction of counterfeiting and other solutions that we need, right? Now, in those chips, we're going to have basically NFTs that are linked to proving authenticity for your luxury products. So let's say you buy a Chanel purse you're gonna be able to have that chip and that NFT associated to that purse. And you're gonna know that that is your purse. And one of the beauties about that is that there's a lot of people that are rocking fake designer shit and they don't even know it. And this chip is gonna be the eradication of that market, at least until counterfeiters get good enough to attempt to try and do something similar. But then they would have to go through the effort of, of, of probably breaking the blockchain, which isn't necessarily easy or possible to do. So other potential partners that are in the pipes or that have been, you know, declared as partners officially or along the umbrella is you got Louis V, Prada and Gucci. They've all launched NFTs within certain sequences of each other. And I have a lot of the resources here, but there's so many different articles linking all of them that for me to basically go through every single one of them with you guys will take forever so you're just gonna have to go into the sources to see what i'm looking at that also includes you got fabricant rtfkt studios which is two digital fashion houses and the thing that's crazy about them is that uh rtkf uh R la, 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 la. rtkft studios got bought by nike so the fact that Nike is buying a digital fashion brand and they're getting involved with it like that just goes to show that one of the most successful fashion companies or successful clothing companies right now is getting in. And not only are they getting in, like I said, you saw it on the about page, they have people on their advisory board who are part of Nike and part of other uh, brands as well. Like, like one, of the, one of the things that I was extremely shocked was Atari. Atari is launching sneakers either, I think it was on Fabricant, they were launching Atari sneakers, meaning that Atari is somewhat connected to Luxo. And I've mentioned it in my groups, and I don't know if I've said it in a video, but I genuinely think Atari is going to make a comeback through the metaverse. They've been dead for many years, but I think this next step forward might actually be Atari's comeback. They have bought land, they've done a lot of things in the metaverse, and it almost seems like fitting that they would end up there because of their style and the way that metaverse is already being like uh, spoken about. Another thing too that I wanted to mention was I saw an article that was talking about how Kriegler perfumes, which is like a very uh, unique perfume slash cologne brand that allows you to lease scents for a year or for months at a time, which means that when you have that scent, you are unique to that scent. And they're even doing NFTs to sell their perfumes, which is very interesting. And I wouldn't be surprised if Luxo or Dematerialized or any one of these partners in the umbrella are involved with that. Now, obviously, you can't really say for a lot of them, but for a lot of them, you could kind of make a good guess. And along those lines of guessing, I wanted to mention that even Instagram slash Meta and Snapchat are potentially involved with Luxo. And it's not even through directly being involved, but they allowed 
digital fashion that was made on a Luxo blockchain or a Luxo platform to actually be displayed as a wearable on Instagram and Snapchat recently. And that in its own is an extremely huge potential partnership because if that becomes official in any way, you know, that's Facebook's market cap that, 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 that could potentially flow in to Luxo. And from there, does that mean that Luxo becomes the engine for NFTs and for digital fashion, but not only that, but for the beginning of, let's say, a decentralized, almost luxury social media type of thing. That's how I'm kind of seeing it because I'm looking at Facebook and how they've been getting scrutinized over having too much political influence, having too much this, too much that. It's only a matter of time before the centralized uh, system start to break down. And if Luxo becomes a blockchain that allows everyone to interact almost as if they were social media, which is what I think they plan on doing to my understanding, then it's a no brainer that Luxo could potentially be the platform that holds the metaverse and a lot of products within it. That was another potential partnership that I wanted to, to mention was Instagram and Meta because that's huge. And some of the other people who have done drops with uh, Dematerialized and, and the Luxo house are, are like, like, like it's such a tongue twister, RTFKT Studios, as well as Fabricant. They have Rico Nasty who got involved and she did a drop recently. She was a rapper, classic rapper very well known. We also have the Bundesliga Soccer League, which is basically a German league for soccer. And the way I see it is Germans have always been relatively renowned for their ability to play football or soccer, however you prefer to word it. If, if it goes well on that platform, it's almost like a piggyback into the FIFA platform. And we know how diehard people are for FIFA. So if Bundesliga leads to FIFA, that's a lot of money. Not only is that a lot of money, Luxo becomes the brand that rocks it. So it's it's like it's like Luxo's lining itself up to be something huge in Europe. And it makes sense because they are they are based in in in, in Germany, if I'm correct. In that in that establishment there, they have pretty much all the connections they need to basically establish themselves in the luxury brand world. This is another thing that I wanted to mention too, was that Luxo and dematerialized like I didn't know that Marjorie and Fabian were actually married so then it made me realize like oh their partnerships are actually more likely to be partnerships like if someone's partners with dematerialized and Luxo is Luxo then it's not like a partnership in passing it's very much a partnership they're married and they're working on Luxo together which kind of makes it more beautiful because then it makes my job a little bit easier having to look at it from a perspective of like who could be, who can't be a partner, what's the possibility? It's like, no, they're married. So if one locks a partnership, the other one gets it and vice versa. So it's actually a beautiful system for me because it makes my job just a little bit easier. It's probably the most smiling I did doing this entire research because I felt like, hey, I don't know if you guys ever seen uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia when Charlie's like melting down and he's like looking at the board full of all these names that he came up with, linking them all together. It's a meme. I'll probably post it in the corner of this chat just so you can see which meme I'm talking about. I felt like him the whole time and uh, I'm just happy I get to crack a smile now. So, hashtag relationship goals. Yeah, hashtag relationship goals. Hashtag relationship goals. Thank you, Fizz, for reminding me. I don't know these things. I'm a caveman who just understands crypto. Some of the other partnerships that I did want to mention or potential partnerships and listings specifically. So I mentioned Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and how they have the wearables able to be displayed or they were able to be displayed for a brief period for specific drops. But I also wanted to mention that Coinbase and Crypto.com have basically allowed Luxo to be listed on their DEX. So meaning that there are Luxo wallets compatible to their DEXs. And while that doesn't necessarily mean anything more than it's a wallet, the reality is they wouldn't list it on the decks for nothing. It means that Luxo is potentially in the works with building a partnership. And if they manage to land either crypto.com or Coinbase, don't be surprised if that leads to a partnership with Visa. And they're all European, well, I mean, 
they're not all European companies, but Visa is a European company. And if they manage to lock down something with crypto.com, then Visa's in the pipeline with it because they're directly linked to each other. And like I mentioned before, uh, Deutsche Bank was actually one of the last points that I wanted to mention. But then there's one more, one more huge one that I've actually been saving to put almost as a cherry on the top. And this one's associated specifically with Luxo, not just dematerialized, but specifically with Luxo. And it's this right here. So you roll a little bit down. You're thinking, okay, what's, what's going on here? Bam. Yes. in Sheeg near foundation CFO. But what was he before? He was formerly a black rock director. Who is black rock? Well, if you look at all the companies in the world, they're owned by either two companies. One of them is Vanguard and the other one is BlackRock. You have someone who is in BlackRock as an advisor. And you can see right here just exactly what BlackRock's all about. Look at their assets under management currently. In 20, uh, in, in, what was it? In 2000, from 2008, or actually rather here. Originally, before let's say 2020, they had about an 8.68 tr uh, $8 trillion dollars worth of assets under management. And then by 2021, the end of the third quarter, they hit $9.46 trillion dollars US in assets under management. Meaning that this is a trillion dollar fund. That's huge. And the fact that they're even involved in passing is insane because BlackRock, they own everything. And if they're on the advisory board of Luxo, then the chances of Luxo failing, I'm not going to say they're impossible, but they're very, very, very unlikely, very unlikely because you don't have people like that on your board for nothing. It doesn't just happen like that. And one of the things that I've noticed is just going over dematerialize, it led me back and forth through Luxro, through Fabricant, through all these different studios, back into each other. And it made me realize that this is just silently growing to become a dynamo of not just commerce, but also the beginning of a fidgetal experience. So the creation of physical and digital experiences melded into one, but not only like that, but through an AR and VR capability, right? So that's how it all happens. And if we're going to be heading into a world that's more metaverse related and more online like that, something like this is just the next step in the ev evolution for it all. So I wouldn't be surprised to see something like Luxo dematerialized and this entire platform succeed. And even me personally, I feel like the top on a lot of NFTs is in or coming shortly. But for some reason, I think the NFTs that'll do best will likely be land and actual like assets of the, of the, of the metaverse to come and things like Luxo. So like Luxo drops specifically, because currently a lot of them, they're not really being looked at. And the thing is, is once all these luxury brands start launching their own NFTs on Luxo, because we're not going to know that that's going to happen until it starts happening because of the NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. Yo, there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of demand for that because already people are throwing what 60 to hundred ETH for a picture of an ape. Imagine what they'll do for Chanel or Gucci or Nike or this or that, like at the end of the day, they're, they're catching a niche market of people who just want to throw their money. And that's kind of where you want to be. So even if it doesn't get a lot of different brands or people or this or that, it has the ones that, you know, bring in big money. That was basically uh, a summary of the partnerships that I found and some of the more interesting things that I've noticed about it all. Like they've been mentioned in Vogue and Forbes. And I wanted to mention that too, if I didn't say before, Vogue, Vogue talents also feature them and did a drop with them as well. I guess all I could say is as I research more into this subject of dematerialized and Luxo, I'm probably going to have to do another video about it and recap some more things that I may have missed because there's a lot of things 
And not only is there a lot of things, they're hard to find. But a little birdie gave me a hint and said that every time dematerialized follows someone on Twitter, usually a drop follows. Now, obviously I can't say that's a guarantee or not, but I'm looking for it and I appreciate the heads up to the person who told me. That's more or less my recap or my analysis of dematerialized and all the other Luxo associated digital fashion houses that are currently partnering up with multiple brands. If you watch this video to the end, I want you to like, comment, subscribe, check out our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, Patreon, everything that you see on our link tree that you could click on, click on it, definitely check it out. Don't be shy, we don't bite. And if there's anything that we missed or anything that you would like to ask, feel free to drop something into the comment section and let us know. Take care.